Behold, the BCS walk behind tractor. I want to introduce you to the BCS walk behind tractor. There are various brands of walk behind tractors, but here at New Entry we use the BCS, an Italian made machine that most models use a nice Honda engine. And what's nice about these machines is you can use various implements with them. It has a PTO, a power takeoff right here, so that you can take this, off, this implement off and put on any other one that you might have. And their BCS website has a wide range of implements from tillers to mowers to water pumps snow blowers, wood splitters, all kinds of things can be used with this machine. It has a few nice features also in that you can offset the handlebars easily. So if you were tilling and you didn't want to walk in the area you were tilling, just by gripping this you can adjust the handlebars. Uh, this shifts the gears, so there are four gears on this model and the fourth being only for travel. It's so fast you wouldn't want to use an implement with it. You can go in forward and reverse with this machine. Here's the throttle. This is the clutch and this red is a safety mechanism so if you were out in the field and lost grip of it it would kill the engine. That's a nice safety feature. Here's the choke. Gas is on. And we'll try firing it up. Oh, and, and this lever here is how you um, engage the PTO. Engage it or disengage it. If you're going to be using your BCS walk behind tractor for your field preparation and primary tillage, there are a few implements you might want to consider using. If you have a lot of residue in the field, whether it be cover crop or large weeds, you may want to use a mower, especially a flail mower like this one. Uh, the flail mower, as opposed to the rotary mower, has these blades that flail and can chop up very tall residue. So you could take winter rye, sorghum Sudan grass, and uh, a lot things with a lot of biomass that can shred it up into almost like a, a fine mulch. So that's a good tool for that purpose. A very common tillage implement is the roto, roto tiller. Here it is on its side, just so you can see how it uh, how its blades are. And the rototiller is effective, and for soil health purposes, it should be used sparingly and wisely. So these tines chop into the soil, and then they throw it quickly, especially if you're on full throttle into the hood to break up those soil aggregates and then what you're left with often is like a fine fluffy seed bed that's why people are inclined to use it it does make a, a bed that's easy to seed into but it can it can damage the soil in a couple different ways a you're getting air into the soil so you're feeding all the microbes in there giving them lots of oxygen and with that they often will consume more organic matter that's in your soil and exhale that in the form of carbon dioxide. So it can over aerate your soils and kind of burn up some of your organic matter and it can damage those soil aggregates by um, churning it and slamming it into this hood. One more thing about rototilling that might not be great for soil health is that you're you're making everything in really fine 
particles and it's really going to be really easy for all of that soil to then blow away. It makes it really susceptible to erosion because you've got nothing holding the soil together. And you know, when you think about something like the Dust Bowl, that was from continuing to till at the same depth, losing everything that was holding the soil in place and then just having it all sort of blow away. So that's another consideration you might want to think about when deciding how you want to till and what depth you want to till at. Also, it will um, bring up weed seeds from lower down, so you can experience more weed pressure if you're tilling a lot. A couple ways to mitigate some of those negative effects from tilling, rototilling. You can go in a lower RPM so that those tines go slower. So I might go in a higher gear so that the tractor's moving forward at the same speed, but the RPMs is lower so that these aren't spinning as fast. That's one way. Tilling when the soil is not very dry or when it's, it's super hot out is a good idea um, so that you're not killing the microbes in the soil by just drying them out. And then tilling only as deep as you need to is the other good method. Um, this rototiller, you can adju adjust the depth a little bit by controlling this tine. You kind of pull this thing out, this pin out, and you can lift this handle up and down. And that will control the depth to some degree. If you want more control over how deep your tiller goes, this precision depth roller is a really good product and we'll show you that in more depth. So in our efforts to minimize tillage, to only till when we have to and only till as deep as we have to, there's a great tool in the BCS arsenal called the Precision Depth Tiller. So this is a regular old rototiller and on the back of it is this Precision Depth Tiller which allows you to control to the half inch how deep you want to till by adjusting this very easily on the fly. So when you're running it out to your fields, you can allow this roller bar to let it roll for you, but then you kind of decide how deep you want to go. So our bed is pretty good here, so I'm only going to try to go maybe three quarters of an inch as I till and keep those layers below the soil from drying out and weed seeds up from deep below. So this is a real handy tool. There's another implement called the power harrow, which may be even better for soil health. It has um, vertical blades that cut the soil and they don't mix the layers at all. Um, but it's very heavy and it's expensive. So this is a good alternative. Another tillage implement for the BCS tractors is the rotary plow. So this has the six blades that can go into pretty, they're pretty aggressive. They can get deeper and into say a sod. If you were breaking ground for the first time, this might be a good tool. It's more powerful and more concentrated than the rototiller. Know, it, it works at 18 inch zone rather than say 24 inches but it can get deeper and it can really churn up even sod so you can get a it it will cast the soil off to the right side but if you get a plate you can put a plate over here so that that soil just kind of stays in place and it, it ends up work, acting kind of like a rototiller just churns up that soil and leaves it where it is. The rotary plow can also be used for building raised beds. So if you take the plate off and use that function where it does cast the soil, you can make raised beds with it. 
So those are a few tailage options for the BCS. I want to demonstrate changing out implements with the BCS. So what we have on it right now is the flail mower and you want that on the front of the machine. Those flails spin like that and sometimes things will shoot out the front. But we're going to switch it to a tiller, which we want to have positioned um, in the back of the machine. So this little quick release lever helps us disengage whatever implement is on the PTO. I'm going to try it without turning on the machine so that we can keep the mic clear. But sometimes I'll loosen a little by hand or I'll come to this side and just kind of do a little bit of a shaking motion to disengage the first implement and then try to line up the other one. If the machine's not on, I'll throw that in gear so that the wheels don't roll. And I'll just kind of put that on. Make sure the pin falls all the way in, maybe give it a little shake. So now we have the tiller on, but because we want the tiller to be in the back of the machine, we can take off both the gear shifter and the PTO shifter. And this little lever allows you to rotate the handlebars about. You can change the height of the handlebars with this lever. And then put them back in. 